Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today I'm going to do a thing I know you'll love. One of the videos that you've liked the most is the one about multiple selection. So one thing that Google Sheet doesn't have is that I have a drop down. For example, I have some hobbies, choose reading, for example. Okay. But what if I want to choose other things because I may have different hobbies. So I don't want to write it. It would be really nice if I choose, for example, gardening. And then I would have reading, comma, gardening. And if I choose, then I also have another hobby. I have volunteering as a hobby. So that it will also start doing this comma separated list. And I have also rock climbing. OK, this we have to do it with some code. This is what we're going to do today. And we're going to add a couple of function, nice functionalities. For example, if you choose again by mistake, you choose gardening then it won't add gardening because it will detect that you already have gardening and it won't put it again. And if you want to start again, then you just delete it and it'll work. But everything we need to program it with a Google Apps script. This is what we're going to do. Some of you may have already seen my other video where I do this very similar, but with another, with an auxiliary column. So you select here reading and then you start writing reading here and then you select photography and then you will start having reading and photography and you'll have separated the drop down and the values. But I think this is much more practical. And the only objection is that you will have this little red flag that says like if it's invalid, but I don't think it's a big thing, but just for you to know before you start doing it. I know you're going to love it, but before we begin, you can just go to the Patreon page and download the template and start using it right away or do both. Download it and see the video. So if you need to change anything, and you don't need to write it down because it may take double or triple the time of the video while you pause and all that. And if you do so, you're helping me a lot by becoming a page. And if not, you, if you like this type of video, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. So each week you'll have one of these nice and weird videos of Google Sheets and Google Apps Script. So before we begin, thank you. Thank you so much to all of my patrons. And let's see how this video goes. So let's begin as always with a fresh new Google sheet. I will type sheets.new. And the first thing we're going to do is to create a list, which we're going to put in our dropdown. Let's say something that may be prone to do multiple selection. For example, hobbies you may have multiple hobbies. So let's say, so I asked ChatGPT for 20 hobbies. I'm going to paste them here, maybe remove some of the parentheses. That's it. So you could like reading and also like gardening and also like photography or okay. So this will be our options. And let's do now I'm going to give a bit of zoom here and we're going to create a new sheet that will be our data or main sheet main. And here, let's say a student and the hobby for hobbies. So let's create our drop down. There are many ways, especially here in 2024 to create drop downs. Very easily just write the at sign and then start writing drop downs and you hit enter. And now you have your drop down here. I'm going to say that we're going to apply it to a range. Let's give it a bit more of zoom and apply it to a range from B2 up to B without a final number so it goes up to the last row if you have 20 if you have 200 if you have a thousand rows it won't matter it will always go to the last one okay and here the criteria we're going to change drop down because drop down is if you give the list yourself but if you're going to link it with another range you need to choose drop down from a range and we're going to select the range and the range will be options and my hobbies so i'll there are several ways of doing this. One easy, easy way is doing control shift down one time and two times. So it also remains open. Actually, you could also delete the number. So if you add more hobbies in the future, then you don't have to change your drop down. Let's click done. Let's go back to main. And if I try to select a hobby, then here I will have my hobbies. So this is the basic scenario with a basic drop down. 
but what happens if I want if I have writing but then I want to add reading I have done it in different ways in a couple of videos in my in this channel and in my Spanish channel so today I'm going to try to do it in another way I will need code mandatorily so let's go extensions app script we're going to use this function that Google app script creates for me but we're going to change the name we're going to name it multiple selection drop down so what I need in my multiple selection drop down I need two things the first thing is to read where is the user at that moment because this is not a code that I should execute with a button with a menu but it should execute itself manually once for example let's say I have reading and then I choose gardening then it should have reading and then gardening so the moment I change something I do something then is this is the moment in which the code should execute in order for it to execute in that moment I need a couple of things the first thing I need for this to run inside an unedit function so I'm going to create an unedit function and inside this unedit function we're going to call the multiple selection dropdown some of you may say okay you, you're doing like very complicated things why not do everything directly on an edit you could do it but I think it's a bit more organized to do it this way because it, if then you have more functions you want to execute at the moment of editing a cell then you could just add the new functions down here so I think it's a better practice to do it this way so this is the first thing to have an unedit the second thing is we need the unedit will execute itself every time I do something so for example let's do I'm going to do a very simple thing here spreadsheet get active spreadsheet and we're going to do toast and put a message that says you change something just for showing you what do I mean I'm going to this is a very simple scenario but once I change something here here it it executes the toast if I change something here it executes the toast if I go to my options and I change something here it will execute the toast I don't want it to execute everywhere I did a video a couple of weeks ago very extensively about how to select which sheets and which cells to to execute so if you want a bit more detail on this you could go there but I will I will try to be very simple here so this example was to tell you that I need two things in my code in this function I'm doing the first thing is determine or grab information about the users whereabouts okay so where is the user in which sheet in which cell this is a what value did he wrote this is the thing I think this is whereabouts this is the first thing I need to do where is the user the second is execute the code only if the user is where I want him to be what do I mean in this first step I'm going to say okay the user is in cell c3 in sheet main but I don't want it to execute in c3 main I only want to execute in this column for example in if if the user is in b3 main it works so I need to put some conditions to know if the users whereabout are eligible for the code to apply or not that's it and finally so may, maybe we could separate this into C here C if the user is where I want him to be and then if so then I could say execute the code this is what is called um, a pseudo algorithm that is more or less the, the explanation before you do the code and in this case in this case the code we are executing is a very simple message but we're going to change it for the drop down so let's begin let's grab the information about the user's whereabouts the first thing we're going to grab is 
where is the user at in what range because with this we are going to be able to get everything else we need so this we do it it spreadsheet up there well actually there are a couple of ways of doing it but i like this one get active range this will give me my active cell there are several ways of doing this and actually we're going to change this in a minute but the concept is the same i need the active cell with which method you're going to get it there are various but the, the important thing is to get the active cell then you're going to need one of two or the address the address is the reference for example b3 or better yet the column and the row the latitude and the longitude the coordinates of the cell so that that i could pinpoint exactly where my user is so for this we're going to get two data the row active row and the column active call how can i get them with my active cell once i have the active cell this is a range object that has a lot of information so i could ask my my range hey what is your row with the get row method the same for the column i get my active cell object that is this spreadsheet up get active range I say, hey, active range, what is your column? There are many other pieces of information I can get for now. The important one is the sheet, the active sheet. So I know where the cell is, I know the row and not the column, but I now need to know if it's in main or in options, or if you have 20 other sheets in which sheet is the user right now. So let's call this active sheet and active cell. I can also ask the active cell in which sheet are you? with this get sheet and another one that stems from this one is in which what is the name of this sheet because this will bring me a sheet object but i need the name to compare now i may need the two i may need the sheet because maybe later i want to do something in the sheet and i need the name because i need to compare if the name is the one that i want for example in this case i need it only to operate in this main but in order to see if the name is main, I need to know the name. So active sheet name. And this will be active sheet dot get name. So now I know the information about the user's wearable. Perfect. And I could get some more information. We're going to do that later. Then see if the user is where I want him to be. This I'm going to do it with maybe I can declare some constants of what I need. For example, what do I mean by? The first constant I'm going to declare is what is the column that I want uh, the code to run in. For example, here, the, the column will be column two. So let's call this column dropdown, I don't know. And this will be number two and you could change it to whatever you want. Then the row, the row in this case, more than a specific row because I wanted to put it in all these rows. What I want is a minimum row that is number two because I don't want it to do anything in row number one because this is where my headers are. So I need it from two onwards. And maybe in some cases you would have a maximum row also, but for now we'll just need a minimum row. So let's say minimum row drop and this will be number one or sorry, number two. So let's, or a starting row, if you prefer, starting row. In my case, I'm not going to have an ending row, but you may have. Finally, the name of the sheet. So, sheet or name, sheet, drop down. And in my case, it will be called main. But again, these are the things you need to change in your specific projects. And finally, once I have this, and I have this, now I need to compare this with this. I need to compare where the user is which, with where do I want him to be. So this I'm going to do it with an if conditional. So if the first condition will be, let's say the column. So active call, for, for me to execute the code, I need that the active call equals to column dropdown. The second condition will be that the row is at least is greater or equal than the starting row dropdown. So active row, 
greater or equal to that starting row drop down. And finally, the sheet. My active sheet name should be should equal the name sheet drop down. Name sheet drop down. And once I have this, I'm going to open the brackets and I'm going to execute the code inside my condition. I'm going to right click and say format document or shift alt f so it looks a bit better a bit more organized i'm going to save it and i'm going to test it for now again it will only put a little message but the idea is that this message message will only appear when i manage my drop down so if i put something here i shouldn't have anything if i put something here i shouldn't have anything if I go to options, I put something here, it shouldn't happen anything. Nothing should happen. But if I change my dropdown, then I have changed something. Okay. So now I have first part of my project. Now we're going to focus on the part of the execution of the code. So now after 15 minutes of setting everything up, now we're just, we, we haven't done anything actually. So what I wanted to do is a bit different from what I did in the other multiple selection video. What I want, because in this other video, and I will, I could drop the link in the description, is that I chose, for example, reading. And here I would have reading. And then if I chose then gardening, then it will say reading and then garden. But I needed two columns. So today I don't want two columns. I want, I just want one column so that if I choose gardening and then I choose writing, then here I will see gardening and writing. So this is a bit complicated. Why? Because how do I know what was before? How does, does Google Apps Script know that before I edited this, I had writing? I need to know that first I had writing, then I need to know that the second thing I selected was reading, and then I could do the code that concatenate writing and reading. So for this, this is why I told you at the beginning that there are many ways of doing this grabbing the information. This is, I like it a lot because it helps us, especially when I'm teaching, it helps me and helps the student get help by sheet. The way I'm going to do it right now is how it should be done, but it's a bit more difficult because it's like turning off the help of Google Sheets. So what I'm going to do is in my own edit, I'm going to put a letter E. This is not mandatory that is a letter E. It, you could put something like event, you could put something like object, you could write whatever you want. But in many tutorials and in the examples in anywhere in the web, you're going to find the E. This is why I'm going to leave it because it's like the standard. But this doesn't mean that you couldn't put the name you want. We're going to leave it as E. And here in my multiple selection dropdown, I'm going to pass this argument E. And also here in my function, we're going to write E. What is this E? This is an object that is passed once, for example, once I write something here. The moment I write it and the moment the onedit function is executed, an object is passed with some information. What information? Information such as this one, which is the active cell, uh, which is the value. So it's basically this same thing with one added value that is going to change everything for me in this code and is that I can see the value that was before editing. So Sheets stores the value that is right now. For example, when I'm going to edit this, Sheets stores quickly the reading and then I write writing and then he has two variables, one for the old value that was reading and one for the new value that was writing. Okay. So this is what I need in this case. So this one, I'm going to use the E. I'm not a big fan of using the E because of what I said, that it turns off the help of Google Sheets, turns off the autocomplete capabilities of Google Apps Script. Okay. So I could leave all of this like it is, and we're going to use the E just for one thing. We're going to need two new variables. The one, the first one will be new value. We're going to cut it. And the second one will be the old value. This new value, we could get it any one of two ways. The first one will be with this active cell, active cell dot get value. The other way is with this E object, and let's use it now that we have it, E dot value. That's it, nothing else. And the old value, there's just one way that I know how to get it. 
and it's with the object e dot all the value okay so this is what i need and with with this everything will work because what i need to do is once it has checked that the user is what i want him to be now i'm not going to do the toast but what i'm going to do is to put in this cell the old value plus the new value that's it so old value plus and let's put a comma and a space plus new value plus is a way of concatenating text that's it and if i click right click and do format document it will separate with some spaces so it's it looks better so where are we going to store this we're going to store this in the sheet i mean the the cell i mean in the active cell so we're going to say active cell dot set value and we're going to put the old value plus the new value that's it what do you think is it going to work or is it not going to work trailer spoiler alert it's not going to work i need to do one additional thing in my sheet if i try to do here writing and then i hit reading nothing happens if i go here you'll notice that i'll have an error failed why the data you entered in cell v2 violates the data validation rules set on this cell why because it's going to try to enter reading comma writing and there is no value in my options there is no value in my options that says reading comma writing so for this to work and maybe this is the caveat or the little limitation that we have in this code and some of you will like it and some of you will not i think it's dumb but i know that aesthetically maybe it's not the best thing i'm going to go right click view more selections go to data validation I'm going to select this rule and what i'm going to change down here in advanced options is that show warning i'm not going to reject the input but i'm going to show a warning if you know something about drop downs and data validations you'll know that a warning will be a small arrow here a red arrow here so this is the only thing that will happen in this code that sometimes you will have this red arrow it won't stop your code it won't damage anything in the cell but you'll see the small red arrow and i know some people will get bothered by that so let's click done and let's try it again so i have reading and then i'll put gardening and you can see that i have reading and gardening it takes a bit while the code executes and now i'm going to do photography so reading gardening and photography and now i'm going to put writing and now i have so it's not perfect we need to change a couple of things so now i have my four options the first limitation is this red arrow you're going to see i don't think it's a problem but it could be for some of you first big problem is that if you want to change to reset then you say okay easy i'm going to delete so i'm going to delete what do you think is going to happen so now i have this undefined so i need to change a bit in my code that if i delete then it resets everything so here inside my execution of the code i could put another conditional and the conditional will be based on the new value and i'm going to say that if the new value it's nothing that is if you delete it then we're going to set the value to nothing set the value to space else so if the new value is anything else then you are going to put what whatever we had before. save and let's try it again so let's de let's delete and ah sorry equals double equal okay let's save again and let's delete it still not working why test i think i think i know the the answer i think that when i delete it they it doesn't recognize it as, as a space but it has no value so i could say that if the new value is space or if there is no new value if the new value is undefined as we can see if any of those two things happen then we will put the, the, the set value as an empty string or space or nothing basically let's save and i think this should work now let's delete it again and now it works so first problem solved if i delete there is no problem 
Again, let's try reading and painting or drawing. See here, playing a musical instrument. Okay, so now I have a problem with having this undefined before. So I could say in this else, what I could do is another else if, and it's that if the old value, it's nothing, or there is no old value, then we're just going to put the new value. Active cell, set the value to new value. It's like overriding. You already wrote, but just put again what you wrote. That's it. Let's save. And again, let's delete. It works. Now let's put reading. And it works. And now if I put gardening, now it works. Here, let's delete again. Gardening. And then collecting. Astronomy. So, looks good. Second problem, the duplicates. What if I write I put reading again? So I will have I will have three readings. Reading, gardening, reading. How can I solve this? So I need to do some code. Here in the else, I'm going to put this inside brackets because I am this will be multiple lines. So before putting the old value, new value, I need to check if the new value is already in my old value. So this shouldn't be too difficult. We could take my old value. There are a couple of methods we could use. We could use the search or we could use the index of. Maybe it's easier index of. We're going to look for the new value inside the old value. This would be a problem if, for example, you have reading and then you have reading fiction books because it will find reading in the reading fiction books and it will delete it, okay? So they not, not delete it, but it would not put when you have very similar values. But again, I think it's a minor quibble. So we're going to look for the new value. And if you find it, so if the old value dot index of is greater than minus one, because this index of works that if it finds something, it will return the index of the of what it found of the first character it found. Let's say we have here reading, gardening, and reading, and you try to put gardening again, and then it will find gardening here and it will return 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, when, where it started found finding gardening. So it, if it doesn't find gardening, it will return minus 1. So I'm going to say only if, ah, sorry, so here is not greater than, but if it equals. If it didn't find anything, then go ahead and do this active cell, only if it does not find anything. Let's save it and let's see if it works. So I'm going to delete it again. And then let's begin. Reading, not a problem. Gardening, not a problem. Let's go with reading again. Uh, okay, I have a problem. Because what I want is that I need an else. Because else, if it did find something, then I'm going to put again the old value. That's it. Here, active cell dot set value, and we're going to put the old value. Let's save. And one more time. Delete. Let's hit reading. Perfect. Let's hit cooking or baking. I have both. Let's do reading again. And it put it again. Let's try cooking or baking again. Excellent. So now I remove the duplicates. So I think this is it. I hope you liked it. This is the general version. We could do a part two. I know some of you have asked some specific cases, but this was just like a redoing of the first one without the other column. I think it's better. The only quibble, as I told you, was this red flag. I think you get used to it. I, I wouldn't know how to remove it. Maybe having another, adding all the possibilities in this list, but I think it's not practical. So thank you so much especially to my patrons. And if you want to become a patron and go be able to go and download this and use it, just changing the column, the row, and the, uh, the name of your sheet and start using it right away, then you can go to the Patreon page. You'll find it there. And if not, just a subscription to the channel, uh, one like or comment below. It'll help a lot. Thank you so much. See you next time.